Hello and welcome to Thriving in Intersectionality, a podcast created to help you learn from professionals in the workplace who have multiple intersectional identities. From ethnic minorities, veterans transitioning into the workforce, individuals with disabilities, parents, and so many more. My name is Lola Adeyemo. I am the CEO of EQI Mindset and the founder of the nonprofit Immigrants Incorporate Inc. I work with organizations to build inclusive workplaces. This podcast was built to amplify the voices of leaders and immigrants in the corporate workplace and to give insights and guidance so people can move past their barriers and advance in their professional careers. Through interviews and solo episodes, I'm going to examine this global world of work. I know that you can learn a thing or two from my guests who have a range of experiences and stories to share. Join me as we meet new people who are successfully navigating the corporate space. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Thriving in Intersectionality podcast. I have been thinking about the word community a lot in the last couple of weeks, months actually, Um, but uh, I wanted to dive deeper into that today on this episode of the podcast. And if this is the first of the episodes you're listening to, my name is Lola Adeyemo and I am the host. I usually have conversations with individuals from different identity intersections and sometimes I have it with myself. Today, the conversation is with myself and is a representation of the communities that I have interacted with over the last couple of months, years, and the community that I leverage personally, as well as communities that I'm building and that I can recommend. So the word community itself is one that I use a lot. And as I have continued to grow in my work with organizations around building inclusive spaces Uh, within their workplace. I also think of how my journey with communities has progressed. So I grew up in a large family and the kind of culture I also was raised in, in Nigeria, West Africa, uh, really your neighborhood is your community, where you live, where you go to church or where you worship, if you have a different religion, where you go to school, right? And, and that word community is built around a group of people coming together around common interest, geographic interest, stage of life interest. And, you know, a reminder that you can have multiple communities at the same time. In fact, a lot of us do have multiple communities um, right now. And each community will serve a different purpose, will fill a different need. For me, uh, moving, moving into the U.S., I begin to realize maybe later rather than sooner the impact of the communities that I had growing up that I just took for granted not in a bad way just it was there it was a part of our culture um, back in Nigeria to be in community you know there's a lot of effort that goes into who you go to church with and when you need referrals when you need connections when you need help somebody in your church we go to church together we live around the same neighborhood. We go to the same school. That defines a certain level of relationship that you have with that person. And community is very powerful and is a key part of my culture, my 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 background growing up. And moving to, to the U.S., the United States, as an immigrant, as an international student for the first few years, I had to be more intentional around those communities and that intention came from understanding the value, right? So I have spent, you know, all these years now in my professional journey, in my life, um, really just thinking of how I want to intentionally partner with companies and with individuals to plug into the right communities, especially when we're talking about professionally. So I wanted to also explore today what my interviews and career journey around corporate America and immigrant voices, how it has evolved and shaped the work that I currently do around the communities that I host. 
I think about communities that I'm in now. I have communities that I am in for a specific reason, to get support in certain areas. I think of communities that I'm leading. I think of communities that I'm hosting, right? And each each of those communities, for me, some of them came up because of a need I dis- decided, I determined that I had, and some of it came from a need I saw that other people had. I want to walk through first my journey with employee resource groups started with that quest for community, right? Getting into corporate America, not having connections, you know, network. Um, when I got my first job in corporate America, it was in California and I had just finished school in Texas. So if you think about it, I didn't really have connections like some of the people that we graduated college together for example you know ended up finding jobs around each other and they still had other college students they still had the campus resources uh, but for me getting into this workplace was the first thing that the, the first set of community that we naturally find when we go to work it's our co-workers it's our teammates well the thing is my first job was sort of like a project role. So it was uh, an intersection of multiple teams. So it's still that feeling of being outside the community and looking for something. Um, you know, starting my engagement with employee resource groups, which are communities within the workplace, I found out that I had certain communities that I was drawn to. For me, coming from a country where it was a lot of um, gender, cultural expectations, right? I was drawn to spaces where I had women in the workplace. You know, I also work in biotech and life sciences, not a lot of female uh, leaders, ex- uh, especially. So I, w- I was drawn to communities that had women. I was co- drawn to communities um, that had networking programs. I wanted to get to know people beyond the titles they had in in the workplace. So um, I think my journey to community was more from a need initially for feeling that yearning for belonging that I personally felt, right? So I was attracted to the communities that had what I needed, right? And every one of us has a role uh, to play in shaping those kind of communities for people around us and also in identifying the kind of communities that we need. Um, So we might use words like networking. We might use words like informational interviews. We might use exploring, right? However you find your communities, your communities will feel a need and sometimes you would move away. You outgrow a community and you need a different community. Don't get stuck in a community that you're done with, that you don't really need to prioritize because you can only be fully engaged and getting value from so many communities at the same time. But when I think of how I ended up starting a nonprofit, I tie it all together because the my my route, my experience working in corporate America, the communities, the voices, the spaces that shaped my career that just pushed me on and helped me to keep going, also helped me to step into the positions where I was able to establish communities around topics and needs uh, that I recognized when not being supported in community. For example, starting a employee resource group for working parents. When I started that, it was in a space that didn't have one. And I saw that there was a need for that community, right? So establishing that community and then going on to being a consultant in a role that I am helping to drive communities in the workplace. And I also think of what my journey, what my interviews uh, for the book Thriving in Intersectionality. What I've learned on that journey in, in building and defining communities. So when we think about the concept of communities, um, I have two audiences that I can speak to based on my experience building communities and also participating in communities for myself. And so today I want to share a little more on 
you know, the messaging for both audience. So if you are in a role or in a position where you're responsible for building and hosting communities or where you are able to and you're empowered to build a community either in your workplace or outside of your workplace. So I have a community that I built for employee resource groups. I have a community for immigrant professionals. I have other communities outside of work. I have a community of women parents again if you are in the position uh, to build communities to host communities first you know there is a need that you recognized which is why you started the community or why you stepped up to lead that community right so you're in a leadership role in a community um, i think one of the things to watch out for is to be clear about who you are building that community for be clear about what is at the core of building your communities. You know, some of the conversations that I had with the women that I interviewed for my book, the immigrant women that I interviewed for my book, as well as even some of the first guests. So the first season of the Thriving in Intersectionality podcast was called Immigrants in Corporate Podcast. And it was an extension of the interviews for my book. It was conversations with immigrant professional women and being able to explore some of their experiences. And I had a lot of stories um, that had, you know, that common theme of I really just, you know, I didn't really know what I was looking for, but I didn't really feel connected in that, you know, company, in that organization until I found someone, until I found the space, until I found a mentor. So there is that yearning for something. And if the community you are building is not very clear, you either attract the wrong people or you will leave out the people that you're trying to bring in as you think about the community you want to build be very clear on who you are building the community for and what is at the core of that community right so i I think there's a lot of fear when you're building communities a lot of fear is we try to speak to everyone we try to call everyone and even with people doing niche to work around consulting around um, hosting spaces you know, is because you want people to come in, you try to speak to everybody. But if the fact is, there are people that will be left out. So you want to weigh both sides. You want to think about it. Are the people, first speak to the people you want to call in. Make sure you're very clear of who you want to call in and make sure they know. When they encounter, you know, your messaging, when they encounter, um, you know, however you bring people into your community, make sure that is very clear up front that this space is for me. Are you building that community around a common interest? Are you building it around a geographical location? Are you building it around certain interest, right? Make sure that picture yourself being a person who needs your community, the person that you have defined as needed in your community, right? When they come across your message, is it clear to them? that this is a community that I want, right? If you don't want it to be based on interest, then make sure you highlight what you want it to be based on, right? It could be based on identity categories. It could be based on uh, roles. It could be based on a transition stage of life, right? Make sure that you are not inviting everyone and excluding the wrong people. So call in who you want to call in and know that, so yes, some exclusion will happen. And sometimes that's okay. You know, sometimes you don't want certain people in those spaces, but the right people that you want in there will come in. So think about all of the criteria that is important for the people you want in there. And you will be surprised at the variety of people, the diversity of people you will get. Because once you are clear on the focus, this is a space for these, right? Other things will be an intersection across the board right so that also helps you to understand what should i prioritize what do i focus on and what else can i leave out right i've heard people speak about joining spaces uh, where they end up living like even departments right there are people that like i joined this organization because i'm really excited about this for my day-to-day job it's just not the same what they are saying is that the larger community of that organization spoke to me but the smaller community of my team is not speaking to me the way I want to be spoken to. And so if you are hosting a community, you are building a community, get clear on why 
and make sure that it's clear to the people that you want in that community. And then keep refining it. Keep refining it, right? You want to make sure that you have a mechanism in place. When you are building community, be ready for evolution. Be ready for transformation, right? As you build a community, where you start from is not where you will be in the next few years, right? The idea is make sure you have a mechanism in place so that you're taking feedback from the people in that community. You're listening to them and you're crafting your messaging, your programming, your content, uh, your resources to fit that community. So when I started the employee resource groups, um, it's called All Things ELG. When I started in 2021, I wanted to focus only on ERG leaders, employee resource group leaders, or oh, that was what I thought. I thought I was only focused on ERG leaders. Now, within the first year, I recognized that once I put the messaging out, the people that were in that space was, yes, 70% ERG leaders, but we also had about 20, 15, 20% of people that showed up every month were actually ERG managers. And we had a small percentage of people, about 10% that always shows up every month, are people that work within organizations that don't even have ERGs. They are interested in starting ERGs. Now, if my messaging had been like a space for ERG leaders, only ERG leaders will show up. And the value that we're able to get from that mix will have looked very different. We said this is a space all about ERGs. So if you, it doesn't matter if you're in an ERG or not. If that space says it's all about ERGs and we're going to get coaching and we're going to get networking, even if you don't have ERG, even if you don't know what ERG is, so I have people show up that would say, I'm curious about it. I've heard about it. I've heard you talk about it. I've heard other people talk about it. I came today because I want to know more. And they walk away with a better understanding of what ERGs are and with resources in their toolbox that they can leverage once they are ready to launch ERGs or a better understanding to choose the right ERGs to join when they come across it again. So again, create your space, make the message clear, and just know that as you build and evolve it, you might have to refine your language to make sure that you're still calling the right people. If your mission, if you're mission driven and it's not about people, you wanna make sure the mission is clear so that the right people will come in. If it's about people or certain groups, you wanna make sure that messaging is clear so that people from those groups know that this space is for them and what they are walking away with. Now, the other side of community conversations is when you are seeking to be part of a community, how do I know this is the right community? I think the first thing is, let's talk about the importance of community because I think whether you're building community or you're trying to join community, you want to really understand uh, some of the critical things that communities bring um, in for us. I think the first one is emotional support. So again, when I talk about all the people I've had conversations with, it included guests for my um, interviewees for my book, right, for my book research, uh, included members from uh, the Immigrant and Corporate community and the ERG community that I'm talking to, right, is sometimes they come in from a place of desperation and frustration and exhaustion. Sometimes we get on our all things ERG call, um, especially those moments where we've had like some breaking news, some national political unrest issue that is happening um, across the country, across the world, right? Sometimes people come into that space because they can't find a space as an outlet within the organization. So this space is a community for employee resource groups. And we are all about ERs, employee resource groups, right? ERGs, BRGs, CRGs. So when people show up, they are coming from different companies. But sometimes within companies, we are always still going to prioritize professional stance and professional work. So when there is a crisis, when there is a big, big news break, um, especially when there's a tragedy and people are struggling, our workplaces are not equipped to support employees who show up to work. Now, if you think about the people that serve on ERGs and, and the leaders and the managers, right? They have their day job, and then they also have this new role that they are volunteering for within their organization where they have certain responsibility. Well, when you show up after a major tragedy or something is happening nationally, 
the focus is usually on the, your day job, right? You're coming into work as usual. That unofficial job is not the first priority for the organization, right? That's the group. That's the space that the All Things ERG community uh, creates. So the people that come into those spaces, they are showing up. They have the same background. They are ERG leaders. They are ERG advocates. They are ERG managers. They have that same background, that common interest, that thing that binds us is because we are interested or involved or leading ERGs. But when they come into that space, they know this is the community of people that get me. So they show up in a very genuine way, in a very raw way. You know, sometimes we have a defined topic or speaker, but we end up really just making space for people to let it out. And, and so there is emotional support in community. And sometimes it's mental, sometimes it's uh, emotional, sometimes it's resources, right? It's what we need right now. Sometimes it's diving into our toolbox and saying, here are some, uh, you know, uh, books, some speakers, some authors, some events happening, some tangible things that people can take away and go to solve the problem that they have. But sometimes we show up and people just want to be present, to be heard, to be seen, and to know that forget about my roles, you know, everything that weighs heavily on me right now just means that I need a space where I can be with other ERG leaders who work in different companies, who are also here carrying that weight and need emotional support. So thinking about the importance of community, Emotional support is a huge part of it if you're talking about building a community or joining a community for specific reason. Uh, the other one is emo- uh, professional growth, right? So we talk about communities and how employee resource groups goes beyond not just networking, right? And I always, when I talk to companies, I always say your ERGs still, we're not growing away from community to become another department. No. At the core of what we are is still that affinity, that sense of we are family, we get each other, we are here for each other, we're supporting each other emotionally. And then we move on to still being able to provide the resources that people need. So the people in that space are all still professionals. They all still have careers, right? They still want to get promoted. They still want to get developed. And so community will provide um, professional development. Communities are heavier on professional development than emotional support. And that's where the differences kind of come in. Uh, But it should start with at least these two. And that sense of belonging is the feeling that comes out of that comes out of resources and tools and professional development and then emotional support. So we can't separate the two and say we are very professional here, we are not emotional or we are all about networking and social and we don't talk about tools. You have to talk about tools and resources and you have to talk about helping people feel belonging um, in your space, in your community and supporting them emotionally. So community, very important. Now, Whether you have the role as somebody responsible for establishing a community or for leading a community and understand these, understanding this importance now, now thinking about it in terms of as an individual, as a professional in the workplace, what kind of communities do I need? Right. And this is where it's going to vary depending on where you are, what phase are you and and what do you need? So we, you know, we, we have the work to start with doing the work for for ourselves, right? How do I find my community? What kind of community do I need? Um, Is the first question you ask yourself. What am I facing right now? What what do I really need help for? What kind of communities am I looking for, right? Um, And it could be professional community. It could be outside of your profession. It's you, you as an individual. What do you need? Are you in a season where you want to move forward in your career? Where's that frustration coming from? Then, what you might be looking for is a community that is around a professional development in an area that you're exploring or in an area where you want to advance, right? Because there are professional development organizations uh, that have community building at the core of their work. There are professional development organizations that is all about certification and resources. And there are professional development organizations that blends both really beautifully. And there's professional development organizations that um, also are community-based. So again, what are you looking for? 
You can be working in an organization and be looking to plug in with your local community where you live. And I personally have been in that position myself, right? Prior to leaving corporate America, all the companies I worked for were Fortune 100 companies. And so you can imagine working with global remote teams, very disconnected. There was a time where I was working in a team of five, like literally my manager and my co-workers were all in different cities in the U.S. We even had somebody outside of the U.S. So we're not seeing each other. And we didn't meet each other in person. So you can imagine, these are the people I'm working with every day. These are the people that I'm closely associated with at work, but I'm actually not seeing them. So I needed, I I was craving community in my local area where I lived, but it also took me understanding what was I looking for, right? So I'm not looking for just my neighborhood group. I'm looking for a professional group, a professional community in the city where I lived. I wanted to meet other people who were working in the same industry, right? So that was a criteria, right? Like I was working in biotech, so I wanted to meet other people in biotech. I wanted to meet other people working in operations. I wanted to meet people working in supply chain, and I wanted to meet project managers, right? So these were still professionals, but it was important for me to be, for it to be local so that I could go for in-person and, and connect with them. So when you determine where am I right now, what is important to me, you identify the right communities to be a part of. And then the third part is no one to transition. So I think a lot of times it's knowing the difference. Sometimes you're checking out a space, a community, because you need it. And sometimes you need to recognize if it's not the right one for you at this time. It doesn't mean anything is wrong with that space, with that community. It just means when you look closely, you find out maybe this is not the best for what I'm looking for right now. And that's okay. You know, you probably walk away with a couple of new connections and understanding of that community. And maybe down the road, you can recommend it to somebody else or you might be in a better position to take advantage of that community. Even when you determine that a community is right for you, sometimes communities are right for us in a season of our life, right? Know when that transition needs to happen. When it starts to feel like too much work and you're stressed out about being part of a community and you are losing the motivation and the passion and you have a deeper demand on you for another community that you're struggling to find time for. Sometimes it's time to transition, right? So know what you want, try it out, know when it's time to move on based on the seasons you are in. I hope that is helpful as you think about the word community, what it means to you, knowing how to find the right ones, knowing how to get plugged into the right ones, and also understanding when it's time to transition so my conversations, my communities, my primary communities right now, um, especially as it relates to career, is employee resource group community. But of course, I'm going to wrap up by talking about the immigrants in corporate community. First thing was even in the name. So even just choosing the name immigrants in corporate. I mentioned that when I started doing the work around immigrant inclusion, it came from my work as a consultant, for companies focused on employee resource groups, right? And I saw a need for the immigrant community. And even using the word immigrant in the name, I it took a lot of thought and intention. Is that pushing people away if they are not immigrant or if they are on, I don't know, whatever the word immigrant means to people, um, especially if you're in the US, you know? But then I thought about it. I, I was spending too much time stressing about the people that, maybe they are better being excluded, right? If the word immigrant makes you want to stay away from an organization without getting to know people, then maybe you are not my in audience, right? And and this has even been more apparent uh, this week, this last couple of weeks as I meet with uh, advisory board members. So Immigrants Incorporated is a nonprofit. I, was, I have been really just impressed with the people that have expressed interest in the advisory board and I've been doing a lot of interviews. And I was thinking about it. Some of the people are not immigrants, are not affiliated with immigrants, but the curiosity, the passion that they bring, the willingness to support this 
really warms my heart, right? So again, I, I was intentional about the name of the organization, Immigrants in Corporate, knowing that there's a little bit of controversy around the word immigrant and it triggers different things for different people, but that's why it's there. If that word makes you want to stay away, then maybe you need to stay away. Maybe you shouldn't be my focus. If that word makes you want to come in and learn, makes you want to get in and, come and get support, then we want you here, right? So being intentional about what that community is about, what it's doing for you, who needs to be in there. And then the Immigrants Incorporated membership community, um, if you have not heard about that, we launched a membership community and it's been a journey to get there. It's taken more than two years of just research and conversations and talking to allies, talking to advocates, uh, talking to potential donors and partners and sponsors and understanding the need for this community specifically for immigrant professionals. Now, the members, the people that we are calling in are immigrant professionals. If you are an immigrant, if you are working in the professional space, if this space speaks to the need that you do, that you have uh, strived for within your corporate career, come join us. And joining us is a collaborative, right? And when I use the word community for this space, it's very intentional. You're not signing up for a workshop. You are joining a collective group where your input is important and we're also going to invest in your career. You know, that's the commitment that we're making in that space. You know, come be a part of a community that is going to support you professionally to get those leadership roles to move up, come be a part of us, but also come join us because we need your voice. I was in a conversation just this week with someone that came across my podcast and we're talking about, sorry, my TED talk, right? I was talking about my TED talk and she said, I listened to your TED talk and I was really moved. It got me very emotional because I understood exactly what you were talking about. And that's the group that I'm looking for in the immigrants in corporate community. It's not the people that listen to my TED talk and they say, what does that mean? Is that really happening? No, they say need. The reason why the community is primarily for the people that get it. You know, this is a space where you don't need to explain what you're going through because immigrants in corporate members know what you're going through. We are all in this together and we are here for the solution, right? How can we support each other? And then the second part of it is not just now that we are here together as a collective, yes, we are supported our own careers as a priority. We're going to support each other. We're going to push each other up. We're going to develop our professional career. But the second part is how can we as a collective bring our voices to make change happen within the organizations, the systems, the policies, right, within those companies. So you're signing up to be part of a collective supporting change, systemic change. And then the third piece of this is also public advocacy. It's tied to research, it's tied to voices. So there's the awareness piece for us, for you as an immigrant professional, you know what you're looking for. We're going to provide that emotional support just by being in that space. You are with people who get it. And then your input, your insight, your skills, will help to take back the solutions to organizations where those changes need to happen, as well as public policies. So Immigrants Incorporated is a membership space. It's also a partnership calling you in to partner with us, to be a part of a movement, of a collective, to drive change and make sure that inclusion as a process, inclusion overall in the workplace includes Im immigrants as well. So as you go on this journey for community, whatever community looks like for you right now, you know, I hope that the insights I shared just from my lessons, building communities, talking to people, helps you to identify the community that you need. And please share this episode um, put a comment, send it to people. I love your thoughts. Um, stay connected on our website. Connect with me personally, Lola DMO on LinkedIn. I would love to hear your thoughts around these. And if there are specific communities that you're considering, some of these criteria will be very helpful as well. But if the Immigrants in Corporate Community is one that you're looking for, I'll see you in there. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me, Lola Adeyemo, for these important conversations about the global world of work. 
please rate and review this podcast wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget to share our weekly episodes with your communities and co-workers. For more resources and upcoming events, visit our website www.thrivinginintersectionality.com and join our LinkedIn group, Thriving in Intersectionality. Additional links and resources are listed in the show notes of this episode. Thank you.